Good morning, my name is Specialist Marquina, and for today's brief, I will be discussing the definition of leadership, the three levels of leadership, the geographic combatant commander, and the two types of geographic combatant commander. But before we start, I want you to know that this information is unclassified, and our risk assessment is low. For our safety, since we're indoors, please avoid tripping hazards, and please avoid drinks near to your electronic device. In case of emergency or fire, please go to the nearest door exit. The Army defines leadership as influencing people by providing purpose, direction, and motivation while operating to accomplish the mission and influencing the organization. There are three levels of leadership, direct, organizational, and strategy. So let's go to our first one. Direct leadership, it is a frontline or face-to-face -face leadership. They build cohesive teams and they develop soldier skills from their experience. They also influence the organization. You most likely interact with them every day, just like your team leader, or it could be your squad leader or your platoon sergeant. They're the one who assign tasks while providing a clear and concise mission intent. Their short range planning and mission accomplishment is from three months to one year. This topic focuses on face-to-face -face interaction to impact Army ethics, values, and responsibilities. They develop analytical skills in decision-making and they develop communication skills close enough to determine and address the problem. So now, I will give you an example of a direct leadership. Let's say your company have a mission to qualify to the Emperor range. The direct leader for that um, mission will be your platoon sergeant because they're the one who will assign the task, they're the one who will decide who will be in the range control or the safety or the ammo detail. So basically, that's the definition of being a direct leadership. So any question? If not, let's proceed to the next level, which is the organizational leadership. They're the one that set the policy and system integration, just like your first sergeant or your battalion sergeant major or your brigade sergeant major or your garrison sergeant major. You will rarely see or interact with them unless you work through office jobs. They manage multiple priorities and resources with their staff. They influence hundreds of people in the organization. Leaders on this level observe and visit units or company or, or platoon to evaluate soldiers' performance from the mission that the commanders put out. Their planning and mission mainly focus from 2 to 10 years, just like to JRTC. For example, first sergeant will submit the needs that they will need or the trucks that they will need from that mission. So the staff of the sergeant major will have to review it and submit if he or she will approve it. And sometimes or most of the time the sergeant major gives policy for safety and mission purposes. Do you have any question from that topic? If not, let's proceed to the last one, the highest level. Strategic leadership. Leaders on this level are in charge in a larger organization, including the military and the civilians, at the major demand through the Department of Defense, just like the Sergeant Major. He influenced thousands of people. They follow a long-term approach on planning, executing, and completing the mission. Just like the ACFT, their decision affects more people and political impact rather than the direct and the organizational leadership. Strategic leaders are acquired as the direct and organizational leaders. Let's proceed to geographic combatant commanders frequently act for serious impacts to world politics. There are two types of geographic combatant commanders. 
The first one, they are in charge for the geographic area. For example, the commander of the U.S. Southern Command is in charge for Central and South America. Let's go to the next one. The second type is the functional combatant commanders. Their responsibilities are across geography boundaries. For example, the commander of the U.S. Cyber Command is responsible to defend the nation. Strategic leaders have few chances to visit the lowest level of their organization or unit. The only thing that they have possibility to visit their lowest level if it's gonna be like a special event. Let's say if the sergeant major of the army decide or wants to go to Afghanistan to visit the soldiers from there, then that's a good reason for him to visit it but but if it's gonna be just like visiting the regular or regular unit or regular company or organization it will be hard for him any question regarding for the topics that we have just discussed if not let's proceed to our summary we learn the definition of leadership, which is an act of guiding a team or individual to achieve a goal. And we learn the three levels of leadership, which is the direct, organizational, and strategic. The direct is your frontline or face-to-face -face leadership. The organizational is the one who set the policies. And the last one is the strategic leaders or strategic leadership. The ability to influence others to voluntarily make decisions that enhance prospect for organizations' long-term success while maintaining a short-term financial stability. And we learned also the geographic combatant commanders and the two types of it. These three levels of leadership will help future leaders to achieve their goals and to know the difference of it too and how to better themselves and motivate them to those kind of leaderships. I hope you learned the difference and the connections between those three levels of leadership. Being a leader is required to be skilled and knowledgeable for the mission or for the organization and that includes my brief.